This is an example in which we try to calculate the angle at which a light ray is going to exit from a triangular prism. Okay? A triangular prism is simply a, a triangle shape uh, piece of translucent material. In this case, it's ice. So we're going from air into a triangle of ice. We're going to try to predict at what angle this light ray is going to exit the ice. Okay? So let's try to trace step by step what is this light ray going to do. Well, if it's going from a low index of refraction into a high index of refraction, we know that it bends towards the normal. So I want to implore you to draw this diagram nice and big on your paper. I can't emphasize this enough because there's going to be so much going on. You can't even predict right now how much is going to be going on inside this triangle. If you draw it too small, you're going to really kick yourself later because you won't be able to fit everything inside this triangle. So please, please draw a very big triangle here, taking up half the page if you really want to do this right. Okay, so if we take our straight edge and we're going to trace this light ray as it enters the ice. Okay, going into the ice is going to bend toward the normal because the index of refraction of the ice is bigger than that of air. So take your ruler and bend this light ray toward the normal like this. So there's the light ray. Notice if it had gone straight in, it would have gone along this direction here, but we bent it toward the normal, as you see there. Okay. If you need to take a moment and pause the video to get this diagram sketched out, I realize that this might take some time for you to, to sketch. I used um, a, a ruler to draw this diagram to make the lines nice and straight. So take a moment, make sure that you uh, pause the video, get this drawn on your paper uh, sufficiently. And now what we want to do is make sure you have that arrow on that light ray don't forget that wherever this light ray meets the boundary, we have to draw a normal. Okay, so I'm going to grab the green marker here, and I'm going to draw a dotted line that represents the normal right here. Okay, so that's my, my best effort to try to make this uh, a nice perpendicular line to the, uh, the plane right there. Okay, so... We then are going to go from uh, an ice material into the air, that's high index of refraction, into low index of refraction, in which case we're going to bend away from the normal. So the light ray, when it exits the ice, is going to bend away from the normal. So if this is the light ray direction originally, now it's going to bend away from the normal. So it's going to bend in approximately this direction over here. Okay? And our goal is to find this final angle over here. For now, let's just call it theta. We don't know what it is, but we're going to say theta equals question mark. So now what I suggest is that we trace backwards and ask ourselves, what intermediate angles inside here do we have to look at? Well, first of all, when theta 1, the light ray, comes into the ice, we certainly want to find this angle over here. This is going to be theta 2. Okay? Then something else is going to go on over here. And if you know Snell's Law, you know that whatever this angle is, it's going to turn out to be theta 4. But if you want to find theta 4, you're going to really need to find theta 3 in here. So I'm going to suggest that we call this angle over here theta 3. And now you can see why I implored you to draw this nice and big, because there's a lot going on inside this picture. Okay? So we have a theta 2 uh, between the normal over here and this light ray, but we have a theta 3 between the same light ray and the normal on the right side. So you can see there's a lot going on in this, uh, in this diagram. Okay, so let's first find theta 2. Let's see if that helps us. Maybe finding theta 2 is going to help us. All right, so we're going to start out by finding theta 2. So that's a simple application of Snell's Law. So we're going to say um, n1 times sine of theta 1 equals n2 sine of theta 2. Okay, so n1 is 1. 1 times anything is just itself. So this is just going to be sine of theta 1 is 57 degrees equals n2 is 1.3 for ice times the sine of theta 2. So theta 2 will therefore be equal to, if you divide both sides by 1.3 and then take the sine inverse, you're going to have a sine inverse of sine 57 degrees divided by 1.3, and this is going to give you a theta of um, 40.2 degrees. So we do a quick gut check, and we see, does 40.2 apply to this angle here? And we say, yeah, it looks actually pretty good. So this theta 2 is equal to 40.2 degrees. 
So the question is, how can we use theta 2 to try to find theta 3? Well, we have to look at this and we have to be very, very clever. Now, one thing that I should have mentioned earlier is that the problem has to give you one of the angles, okay? And in this case, this angle will be given to us. This is given to us as 30 degrees. If this angle wasn't given to us, we could not solve the problem, okay? But let's say that this angle up here is given to us as 30 degrees, okay? Now, we have to try to use a little bit of our knowledge of geometry and try to figure out how do we get to this theta 3 over here, okay? Now, one thing that I might suggest is that you imagine if this is a 30 degree angle here and this normal is perpendicular to this plane, pretend for a moment that you extended this normal over here all the way to the other face of the triangle, okay? And of course, this angle between the normal and this hypotenuse of the triangle is 90 degrees. So if that's 30 degrees and that's 90 degrees, right, between the normal and the perpendicular face, then what would this angle be over here? This angle, I'm just going to say this angle over here is going to be equal to the total for any uh, triangle is 180 degrees minus that angle up there is 30 degrees. And if this is a perpendicular angle over here, that's 90 degrees. So 180 minus 30 minus 90 is going to be equal to 60 degrees. So we know that this angle down here is 60 degrees. Okay? So we know theta 2 is 40.2, and we now know that this angle down here is 60 degrees. Now check it out. If you know that this is uh, 40.2 degrees and this is 60 degrees, guess what? I'm going to use a different color here to, to illustrate it. Guess what? Now you can calculate this angle over here, right? Because look, we have another triangle. And the nice thing about triangles is you always get 180 degrees if you add up all, this, all the angles. So if you take theta 2, which is 40.2 degrees, plus 60, plus this angle here, that has to add up to 180. So that means that this angle over here is going to be 180 minus this theta 2 minus the 40.2 minus the 60. And if you take 180 minus 40.2 minus the 60, you're going to get none other than 79.8 degrees. So now we have found this angle to be 79.8 degrees. But that's still not theta 3. So the question is, how can we now find theta 3? Well, if this angle here is 79.8 degrees, and we know that this angle plus theta 3 have to add up to 90 because the normal is always perpendicular to the side, then we can simply say, finally, lo and behold, we can finally come to this angle theta 3 over here. Okay? And we're going to say, okay, theta 3 plus 79.8 has to add up to 90, right? So that means that theta 3 um, is going to equal 90 minus 79.8. And if you plug that in, you're going to get 10.2 degrees. So theta 3 is going to be equal to 10.2 degrees. Whew! Look at all the geometry that we did in just, you know, five minutes. We started with a simple um, right triangle, and within this right triangle, we did one, two, three geometric calculations, basic calculations you would have done in geometry class, but we did them all to solve this problem right here, okay? So now we have theta 3. Finally, now we're almost done. All we have to do is find theta 4, okay? So we're going to use Snell's Law again. So I've got a little bit of space down here. I'm going to create myself a little tiny bit of space over here, okay? And I'm going to calculate uh, theta uh, 4 down here. So let's say with Snell's Law, um, we're going to say N3, that's the index of refraction associated with theta 3, times sine of theta 3 is going to equal N4 sine of theta 4, okay? So now, we're just going to solve for theta 4. So N3 is going to be uh, 1.3, because it's associated with the ice. Um, and N3, or theta 3 is inside the ice. So 1.3 sine of theta 3 is 10.2 degrees. 
equals theta, or rather n4, n4 is one, because that's the air, right? So one times sine theta four, that's gonna be sine theta four. And all you have to do now to solve is take the sine inverse of both sides. So theta four, moving up here, we're gonna say that theta four is gonna be equal to the sine inverse of um, 1.3 sine of 10.2 degrees, okay? So once again, theta four is equal to the sine inverse of 1.3 times sine of 10.2 degrees. And if you put that in your calculator, you will get a theta four of 13.3 degrees. All right, and is that more or less consistent with our diagram? Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, maybe we exaggerated theta four a little bit in our diagram, but we can see that the pattern is correct, that theta three is only 10.2 degrees. The light's gonna bend away from the normal, so we know that theta four has to be bigger than 10.2, and it is, 13.3 is bigger than 10.2, so we know that directionally it's correct. Okay, and this is our final answer over here. The light ray is gonna exit the triangular prism at an angle of 13.3 degrees um, relative to the normal. All right, thanks for watching.